Hey guys, welcome back. It is Adam Flowers here on January 24th, 2024. I have Redwood Met with me. We're going to be talking today about Chicago news past and present. So uh, welcome guys. It is time once again for Mob Vlog. Hey everybody, grab a coffee and cannoli. It's time for Mob Vlog with my friend Adam Flowers and Red Wamet. Red Wamet, how are you doing today, sir? I am doing well. <laughs> Fantastic. It's good to see you here today. And uh, we have a whole bunch of people already in the uh, in the room here, uh, ready, to, uh, ready to chat and partake in the talk about the Chicago outfit, of course, past and present news. Yeah. There's a Facebook group that's similar to that, isn't it, Red? Yes. Mike Burns from uh, Chicago Outfit Past and Present News Articles. There you go. And, and you guys, if you haven't seen that group, check it out. It's awesome. Tons of history in there. Um, and uh, again, present and past news. So that's what we're going to be bringing up today. And you guys, it's your show. So we'll go wherever you guys want to go. Uh, but let me uh, just let me welcome in a few people. Uh, Don Ciccio, D. Porzalo, good to see you. Robert, uh, as always, Jim Yeager. And Miss Can't Be Wrong, little Miss Can't Be Wrong's in the house with us tonight. Uh, Tim Peroni, nice to see you. Uh, glad you're here. Rhonda's in the in the room today. So is Sean Pender, all the way from Chicago Heights. BSJ Brady, it's good to see you. It's just Sunny Zaro, I want to go get another Italian beef with you, sir. That was uh, good. Windy City Beefs and Dogs out here in Vegas is terrific. William Davidson, Eric Epstein, the truth. Timothy Foster, Catherine Guerrero, how I hope you're doing well. Leanne rolling along is rolling along with us today, Red. Uh, Kissy Cat, um, what else do we have? Jerry Cruz, Tony Damiano, Damiano, Tony, do you related to the? Is it no? That was Damiani's. I think it was since it was my it was my it was my uh, Taekwondo teacher when I was a kid. Uh, Damiani, I think. I don't think it was Damiano. It was Damiani. He had a pizza joint over there in Dalton, Illinois. But anyway, Jerry Cruz, Alan B. Uh, Van Pasterman, Homan Sanders, Robert Murphy, Julianne. Welcome, guys. Chicago TRS. The room just keeps growing. The number keeps going up. Been wide. By the way, hit the smash button, guys. Just smash it. JJ Dal Dalmo. Hold on. I've never heard said that name. I live in Northwest Chicago. Still an outfit. Still an outfit presence. Literally watched two guys loading a coupon slot machine into vans today. No kidding. <laughs> Welcome in, Dalmo. Uh, it's nice to have you with us. And, uh, Thanks for that uh, little nugget. Uh, Jerry Cruz, Johnny Taco, how are you today? Uh, it's good to see you. And I've never said that name before either. I, this is great. I love to have new people coming in. Isn't that nice, Red? Benjamin Kundari. Nice. So I'm uh, just starting to look in the comments. And uh, <laughs> Miss Can't Be Wrong, Adam wearing a sweater. Don't even try to tell me it's cold. <laughs> I'm in the Great Lakes. That's cold. <laughs> Listen, I've been been in Vegas red for 18 years and my blood's thinned out when I lived in Chicago I didn't put a jacket on until it was 32 okay <laughs> oh man <laughs> right that's when I that's when I would get oh man it's getting cold out now it gets to 80 and I'm like oh, did that just get a chill what's what's going on it's supposed to be warm in the desert but they they lied to me well they didn't lie to you about those nights no they didn't I know they get cold it does it cools off quite a bit so Glenn B hello um looks like Glenn was in the service thanks for your service Glenn either that or he's a fireman or policeman one of the two or I mean firefighter or police officer <laughs> <laughs> you never know you never know you know <laughs> Frank Kersey uh hello julie oh somebody's talking to julie again in the side chat everybody's always talking to the side chat yeah man something about uh yeah l and b so let's get into it red let's get this ball rolling here on the chicago uh chicago mob you were involved with the chicago mob way back when in the 70s 80s right okay and then in, in of course you had you've heard stories from before then oh yeah lots so, of yeah. What, what do you find to be one of the most interesting um, interesting stories that ever hit the news while you were involved? I guess uh, Danny Seaford murder. Okay. That was all over the news. And and it was kind of 
interesting about it was there was a, a charcoal sketch of uh, composite sketch from the police mm-hmm. of uh, Joey Lombardo. And when you looked at it, it looked like he sat in a charcoal portrait because it looked exactly like him. They played it on TV and everything else, and everybody just laughed at it. They had didn't, no evidence. They couldn't prove it. Didn't he uh, write something in the in the outline? Of the charcoal st- uh, sketch? Yeah, the charcoal sketch. I thought he wrote something. Here lies the ghost of something. Or Am I getting the story mixed? Confused? No, that's, that's Richard Kane. Oh, that was Richard Kane. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and we had we had uh, Joey and Nick Seifert on the show. Right. About this and, and went into pretty good detail about uh, how that happened. What else? Uh, you just mentioned it. Uh, Richard Kane murder. Yeah. That was very interesting. I happened to be driving by just by accident. Just by accident, I was driving by when it happened. I was going east on uh, Chicago, uh, Grand Avenue. I was in Chicago on Grand Avenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just happened to be driving by, and I, I was looking to the right. I was going east, and I was looking to the right. There was a guy out there, and I didn't recognize him until I got closer. But he had a walkie-talkie in his hand. He kept talking, put it down. There was another guy on the roof. And so I figured doing some kind of maintenance. And just so I get close, I hear the boom. And they take off. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy that runs out the back of the place in a, um, uh, he he was trying to get to his car. And he did. He got away. And uh, I recognized the guy on the street was Frank Schweiss. And the guy on the roof was um, trying to Pontiac. I'm trying to think of his name right now. Can't can't remember it right now at the moment. But I didn't know we were going to talk about that. I just can't remember his name. But that was a, a, vi- a big event at the time when it happened. Yeah. It was all over the news and everything. And I was accidentally there. Right. It wasn't planned. It was accidental. And you don't have to be sorry, Red, about not remembering names. Guys, everybody on the channel knows this. We never know what the hell we're going to talk about. So sometimes <laughs> we're running Red's memory back and forth. You you never know. I mean, I so we've talked about so much. I mean, this is what, year three that we're sitting here talking yeah. together? Yeah. Is it 21, 22, 23? Actually, this is year four. This is the fourth year of us sitting here. We did some in the 20, so part of 20. Yeah, so, some in, well, we did one in 20. That was the first uh, video. But anyway, it's been three years of us chatting, sitting here kibitzing, as they say. <laughs> kibitzing, huh? Yeah. Kibitzing. So uh, Joey Lombardo's uh, condo is for sale, according to Robert Murphy. Um, so there's present news. I heard somebody bought it, and then they had it up as an Airbnb. And that, what happened? That, that was done? That's a done deal? That was... Nobody, last year. Airbnb. Nobody wanted to run it. Ah. Uh. See, I, I, Miss Can't Be Wrong, Frank and Adam, I referred your channel to some friends that are interested in learning about the outfit and the family secrets trial. I told them Red is the man and to see uh, to see and about Red's book. So there you go. Thank you, Miss Can't Be Wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mob Vlog, checking in from South Louisiana, the Paisan. Hey, welcome in. It's nice to have you with us here. So... Let's uh, go down the, um, oh, uh, reportedly, Philip Wright said, current news, Gianni Russo didn't invent anything on this day. Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> right? We appreciate that. Um, okay, JJ Dalmo, Frank Schweiss's daughter used to bartend at Sabatino's up until they closed a few years ago. Nice girly, made a hell of a cocktail. Nice. Did. Gorilla? I don't know if I'm saying that wrong. Maybe you just typed it in wrong. I'm thinking nice girly, but maybe a gorilla is something. Uh, I don't know. Um, to Red's credit, he couldn't have made up a name. and uh, he, he he could have made up a name, and a lot of us would have been hoodwinked. About what? Well, yeah. about the name that you forgot. You could have just said any name, and they would have been hoodwinked. You know, you been... remembered it was Harry Ailman. Oh, was it Harry Ailman? Yeah, he drove Pontiacs. He liked Pontiac Trans Amps in those days. Harry Ailman. Man, Harry Ail- We had his daughter, Frankie Forleano. There's a tag right there, you guys. Go check out that video with Frankie. That's interesting. You know, you hear from ha- Harry Ailman's daughter about uh, pretty wild. I mean, it, it's a different side. It's a different viewpoint of, of a mobster, hitman. So, 
Um, oh, Kissy Cat. What is this? Talk about the ruby slippers. <laughs> what the hell does that mean, Red? I don't know. Okay. How about Crazy Horse 2 employees? There were a lot of people employed at that Crazy Horse 2 out here in Vegas, including that Joe Blasco. But, uh, you know, what, what's really interesting about Crazy Horse is Buffalo Jim Barrier. He was a big, big public figure out here in Las Vegas, and he had a wrestling school at one end of the strip club, and he had a um, auto marine store on the other side, okay, repair shop. And, uh, and, and the owner of Crazy Horse wanted to expand it and make it bigger and, and anyway started harassing. It was back and forth. But Jim, like you did, helped out the FBI and built a case against the owner there, and he ended up doing a year and a day. The guy gets out. And the very next day, this Buffalo Jim dead. Interesting. It was just on Unsolved Mysteries. So that show's back. You know that, Red, right? Yeah, I do. I loved that show as a kid. I loved it. And at the end, when you get an update, remember, update and like case from before had been solved because it's somebody's calling help, you know, from the viewer on the TV. Yeah. I love that show. I really do. I still do. It's good. Did John Walsh start that thing with... Uh... His son, Adam Walsh. I think that's what it was. He lost he lost his son or something, right? Well, he started that thing. Yeah, he went missing. Do you see the comment? Yes, I am. <laughs> the truth. There it goes. See, I just wanted to hear it one time. You can't help but giggle. Be honest to God. What's Mike saying? Adam Flowers reminds me of a Midwestern version of Thomas... Lavicia, who's that? I don't know. I I don't know, but I'm sure somebody's finding that funny. Who knows? Um, I guess Miss Can't Be Wrong agrees with the truth. So there you go, Mike. You got some uh, other people agreeing. All right. So Temperoni, why was Richard Kane murdered? Was he trying to take over Sam G's territory? Nobody really knows for sure. I mean, nobody really knows what happened. Uh, the, they know what happened, but they don't know exactly why. The job was given to Marshall Cafano, who was um, kind of his uh, friend, so to speak. He knew him through uh, Sam Giancana. And Sam Giancana and uh, Richard Kane had a lot of things going with each other. Uh, gambling interests in the Middle East, whatever. But I think, from my point of view, for years, it's always been, and I was heard rumors and was told, that he wanted to take back um, uh, Sam Giancana's territory. And Sam wanted to come back from Mexico to the United States. Well, eventually he got deported and did come back after Kane was murdered. And when he did come back, he kind of stayed to his house. And uh, he never did take any, take anything back. And then he was uh, permanent retired <laughs> in 1975. <laughs> Uh, somebody put a bolt in his head and per permanently retired him. Jeez. Actually, um, more than one bullet in his head. They put quite a few. Okay, so uh, Kissy Cat. Let's get to these uh, the, the, the ruby slippers. A mobster just admitted he stole the slippers. He's on his deathbed. Did you hear anything about this? About no. Dorothy's ruby slippers being stolen? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Really seriously. <laughs> you didn't hear about this? That, I mean, that's, I'm going to go down in the comments and see what you guys are saying in a couple of minutes, but let me, I'm going to want to play catch up. So, uh, JJ Del, uh, Dalmo, Spilatro's wife and kid just moved a jewelry store into Elmwood Park on North Avenue, Arizo Jewelry. I, I thought that, I thought that, are, are you talking about Tony Spilatro's wife, Nancy, or are you talking oh, about somebody else? He's he's gotta, he's gotta be He's got to be talking about um, uh, Michael Spilaccio's uh, daughter, I believe. I have no idea. I only jewelry store I, that I have ever even heard of is the, the Gold Rush that was out here and then Anthony Stewart Limited in, in uh, Circus Circus. But I, I thought all that ended in the 80s. That was over with. That didn't continue on. So this is some one of the other family members, I'm guessing, anyway. There's a lot of family members around. Sure. You know, did I tell you that we had a Spilatro take the tour? Come on the yeah. Tour? Yeah. 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 It was a, it was a granddaughter of uh, one of the brothers, okay? And 
she came on the tour very pleasant very nice very short but very i mean very nice i so that was one thing i was went when they walked up i went that must be her <laughs> a super nice person i had um anyway let's get back to it here uh how come at the mob museum they don't sell any of frank's books when there were guys in act uh, went there in october hoping to find one cheers guys jacob almost i have no idea uh, you can get it on Amazon, any of the books if you want. I'm sure Huntington Press is still uh, working, so is Wild Blue, Blue Press. They're on Amazon. They're on Amazon because I yeah. The only one that might be difficult is the Hole in the Wall Gang because that was uh, Houdini Press. I don't know if they're still printing them or not. Um, but anyway, you can get them online if you look around. But that's a shame. I have no idea. Um, uh, let's see here. Unsolved Mysteries is a whole different show, according to Eric Epstein. I guess so. Uh, it is. Um, it's interesting, though. Oh, Tim Foster, did you hear that America's Most Wanted is coming back on TV and he's going to host it with his other son? No. America's Most Wanted. Yeah, that's America's Most Wanted. Unsolved Mysteries. You remember Unsolved Mysteries? I think he jumped to that at one time. Robert Stack had it in the beginning. Uh, they might have changed hosts, but I don't think they switched hosts. Not that I remember anyway, but Hey, my memory could be, who knows? Could be the Mandela effect with me. <laughs> exactly, which we've talked about a uh, hundred times. Numerous times, yes. Oh, a hundred. Maybe I'm having the Mandela effect. It's only been a few. <laughs> <laughs> Just scratch one on the wall each time we talked about it. <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> no wall left. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Jim Yeager, according to him, uh, anybody on medication, it's 420 Chicago time right now. Um, Central Standard Time. Scott H., hey, man, it's good to see you. Scott H. was just out here, Red. Just uh, came out on the uh, the tour, and we went and had uh, had a burger afterward. Thanks again for the burger, man. It was uh, fun hanging out, Scott. Uh, Dennis Farina did Unsolved Mysteries. Do you remember? I, I think I remember hearing that. Didn't he? Did, he, he, did a couple of, he did a couple of them, and not all Yeah. Of them. One of those he, he did, yeah. Yeah. Um, Somebody made a comment here about the uh, Sean Patrick made a comment about the uh, put it up. Oh, okay. Arezzo, Arezzo Jewelers opens tomorrow at 7 a.m. One of the Splachos has a Facebook page and they were talking about this. I didn't know if it was real or not. I really didn't. Okay. But I guess it's news. Okay, it's news. Listen, you can have the Mandela effect all day long. You can have the Mandela effect, Red. Just don't have the Mandingo effect, okay? <laughs> Don Cheech. Rugged movie. A rugged movie. God. Uh, Dennis Farina took over. Yeah, that's what I remember. Something uh, Kissy Kate even said Farina was good. You know what we tried? I've never watched. And we were watching, uh, um, we were watching a show last night. And uh, wife and I are sitting here watching the uh, the tube. You want me to sound old? We're watching the tube, and uh, and uh, we saw a show about a uh, about women who end up uh, reporting that they've had sexual assault, and then the cops end up twisting it around, saying, "Ah, you reported that incorrectly, or you reported that misleadingly," and then they arrest them, the girls. For reporting it for making a false report they get the girls to say i don't know and, I, and it's a common thing and there's a whole anyway they were talking about it on there and um the one girl said she used to watch law and order with her dad so this the hey thanks sam adams do you believe a beer is giving us a compliment <laughs> <laughs> i've never i've complimented beer plenty of times but i've never had a beer give me a compliment <laughs> <laughs> thanks sam adams um so <laughs> I'm sorry, that just that was written, dude. That you couldn't stumble. You'd have to trip over that to miss it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so the so the um, um, girl said that she watched Law and Order with her father, and that that show inspired her to want to become a you know a DA and, and this and that. And a, so I said to Allie, "You ever watch Law and Order?" She said, "Nope." I said, "I never watched an episode of it either." That show came out in the 90s. I have no idea where I can watch. We tried to find the first episode to watch it. Couldn't find it anywhere because they've had so many spinoffs. It's like CSI. You know, there's so many spinoffs. It's like, but I want to see the original. 
the, how this thing started. Oh, with Adam Schiff. I watched them all. I don't think there's one I haven't seen. The Law and Order TV yeah. show? But Dennis Farina was in the first uh, first seasons. No. Not yeah. the first seasons. Not the first seasons. Later on, he was. Later he on. Was. Okay. Yeah. But somewhere in that first beginning few seasons, right? There was... Because I want to see those. Okay. Um, maybe there's maybe there's shit. They, they were on TV a long time. Must be good. Year. The second or third year he was on. Ah, I see. Um, back to the slippers. Those slippers can be identified by the MGM worth millions, millions. I was just watching a show about all the stuff that went wrong in that movie. You know, the Tin Man got all kinds of freaking problems because of the the uh, paint that they were putting on him, yes. into him. And then the Wicked Witch, she caught on fire at one point and had to suffer third degree burns and like all kinds of crazy shit that happened on that set. And the, the snow or whatever, they were inhaling and it was like crap for them. And then the little people, that's what you got to say nowadays. The munchkins, they, had, they all put them up in one hotel and they'd had these big, wild, crazy sex parties. Did you hear about any of this stuff? I'm watching some. I did. I did. Uh, back in the day, I I heard that and I was listening to it, and I said it was amazing facts. It was on amazing facts. Yeah, and I listened to it and I said, "Wow, you know all that stuff." And that happened what? I think that was 1939 when they made that movie. It was early it was in the 30s. That I definitely. Collins' remember. first movie, I believe. No, yeah. when the first movie, but biggest. Yeah. And she was doing the um, thing with uh, uh, Mickey Rooney, Hardy, yeah. the Hardy guy. So um, that was back in the 30s. Buddy Edson was the, the original Tin Man. That's the guy who got the, the problems from all the pain. Oh, yeah. and Some kind of, what they put, um, they put graphite or something in the in the paint, I think it was, that they were painting him with. And I don't know, it's crazy. So, uh, all right. Now, look, we went way the hell off course about these ruby slippers that are missing, which I still haven't verified that they're missing. So let me, let me just type that. Stolen uh ruby slippers okay let's see here's oh, an for you. All orders on almost every cable channel gary oh malinsky okay all right hold on guys we're putting this up so so art kelly's in the room <laughs> hey art how you doing guy Uh, Glenn B. Uh, Marshall Cafano didn't do it. He was in prison at the time, I believe. And uh, I'm almost uh, positive that it was Joey Hansen that committed that murder. If that helps you. Tim Foster, uh, remember any crime story with Dennis Frida? I just wanted to, have you had any thoughts on that? One season. No, I haven't, Tim. I don't know if Adam has or not. RV Doc, how you doing? Robert Murphy, I have him on. I don't know what M is, E-M. <laughs> no, I'm sure he paid his Wi-Fi bill. I don't know exactly what happened to him. He didn't say anything. He ultimately disappeared. He's not in the studio. Uh, he didn't freeze. I didn't see him freeze. Kissy Cat, how you doing? 
Buddy Epson quit the Tin Man role after the paint was hurting him. Do you know who took over? Kissy Can? From Buddy Epson? Well, that has never happened to me before, Red. Sorry about that, guys. We went on talking with Addy. A lot of people said he froze. And I said, no, I don't think he froze. He just, he left. <laughs> He'll be back. <laughs> uh, you there, Red? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you guys. Can you hear me good? Okay, everything's good. So, I don't know. I got, I got uh, my computer just, never had that happen. Guys, be sure to hit the like button. Or, um... <laughs> A uh, half hour into this, be sure to smash that like button. Get the uh, the algorithms working. Uh, JJ Dalmo, hey Red, was just in your old stomping grounds. Had some cocktails at Twin Anchors. Went to grammar school over there in the eighties. Neighborhood completely changed. Oh yeah, it has. <laughs> An old place in Chicago's changed. Everywhere Chicago's changed. So, wow. Um. Well, so anyway, the, the, these it's slippers. What an update for you. <laughs> okay, the shoes were stolen in 2005 from the Judy Garland Museum in the late actor's hometown of Grand Rapids, Minnesota, and recovered by the FBI in 2018. And supposedly the museum, and uh, let's see, it hard, and the thought of a final score kept him up at night, Mr. Decree, Decree wrote. Uh, after much contemplation, Terry had a criminal relapse. Criminal relapse? Is there such thing as that? I know you could have a drinking relapse. I had one of those once. I'll never let that happen again. <laughs> That's what the criminals say. It's a criminal relapse. <laughs> a criminal relapse. Well, I slipped. I was walking by the bank and I stumbled in and said, give me all the fucking money. <laughs> I don't know how that came out of my mouth. It just happened. <laughs> I had a relapse. It's a criminal relapse. Honest, Your Honor, I was just having a relapse. I've never fucking heard that before in my life. <laughs> oh, my God. I, oh, man. A prison re relapse, too. <laughs> What's that? I bet it brings a prison relapse along with it. <laughs> prison relapse. Yeah. Last night, I had, a, I had a sugar relapse last night. I was like, oh, candy bar. <laughs> <laughs> Cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> sugar relapse that's hilarious i love um, it i love it thanks bsj that was the great disappearing and reappearing adam trick <laughs> i was here then i was gone and then i was here again <laughs> that's it uh so um robert it's your licks and likes and guys yeah hit the like button all right guys so let's hear about some more current news there was a few other uh, starred comments that I don't know if we read all of them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get back to this. In the beginning, the truth, Mike said. What's the, How come we never hear about the mob involvement in fire departments? And I I, I started this because my dad was a fireman, so I, I got to hear. What do you know about this, Red? Nothing. Nothing? I know nothing about it, no. Nothing about mob involvement in the fire department? No, I don't. What, what, if you were to use your imagination and, and you were a mobster, how could you muscle a fire department or what would you do to use a fire department besides cut the word arson coming to mind? Well, that's the only thing I could think about uh, being helpful. You, you guys are going to make sure you don't get there in time. And at, at that place, there's nothing left of it by the time you just get there, huh? No, the fire department lab, the lab in the fire department. Okay. Fire inspector. Sure. Uh, those guys. We didn't find any accelerants in here. <laughs> or that they can't trace them back to who they belong to. Okay, gotcha. I could see I could see that being a criminal activity there. Why not? Why be, I, it'd be helpful I, to have that guy on the pad. <laughs> it's like it's like having a guy on the team shave a few points off of the game to ensure that they win, and then you have a guy on the fire department who's like, ah, where are my boots? Where's my jacket? I can't find my hold on, don't take the truck. I gotta get my boots and my jacket. Where the fuck did I leave them? Damn it. Son of a bitch. Hold on, hold on. I got some food on the stove too. Let me turn that off before we leave. I'm almost there. Ten thousand dollars. Thanks for making the truck late. You know, you want the truck to be late? Hire my wife on the department, okay? Yeah. 
All right, so <laughs> fire fire department and the mob. You guys are killing me. Um person charge. Yes, just hit the uh just hit like. Yeah, tell us which mob uh, the most money. Howard Herman or Herman Howard. Either way, your name works both ways. I, I know about it. I just said it, theoretically, I guess it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I mean yeah, see, they go into slow motion. Exactly, Don. That's my thought. Police officers are more involved with the public and more closely involved with dealing with criminal matters. Crime invites corruption. I could see a, a see. I see a police department being more vulnerable than a fire department. There are a lot of cops on the take. There, you got crime fighters and you got firefighters. You know, and and really the the crimes where I would think no mob in the fire department because. They were too busy hosing everyone else. Oh, you got to be shitting me, really, Jim? Go, Jim. <laughs> I love it. Luminous Grin, welcome in from Minnesota. Good to see you, buddy. Um, Alan B., I knew some firemen that used their big coats to steal stuff from people's houses that didn't care because because the homeowner's insurance, would just, they filed insurance and it was all burned up into fire. All burned up into fire. And the fireman would smuggle the stuff out in there. I don't know. I remember my dad telling me that he went into an apartment building. Um, there was a fire, and they they found a bunch of marijuana plants in there. And uh, and my dad, my dad said to the guy, "You got two choices. You know, either you're coming in or you know breaking the stuff. Or maybe the cops made him break the stalks of their." plants and the guy was crying oh my god i've been growing these for eight months oh my god he's crying and the police are letting him go they're just, just break the stalks and you're gonna we're good <laughs> no early in the 90s right it was probably in the 90s yeah it was about that so my dad my dad was on the department until the early 2000s so yeah or was it the late 90s he retired anyway yeah that was he retired after i graduated so it must have been late 90s so that was different um let's see here all right slapsy maxi we haven't heard from him in a while the police department and the fire department have often been called the irish mob yes they kind of were really yeah a lot of irish police officers oh yeah that's oh, yeah. why they called it the paddy wagon yeah definitely there was a uh, no. yeah, a lot of irish in the um uh, in the uh fire department also a lot of Irish in there. I had four or five um, people that lived on my street uh, when I lived on Richmond that were firemen and police officers. And they were all Irish. All of them were Irish. Yeah, a lot of uh, guys. Don Cheech, they robbed a Pier 1 store in the Heights. They reported a squad car going down the road with a Papa San chair in the trunk. They robbed a Pier 1 store in the Heights. They reported a squad car going down the road with a Papa San chair. Papa San chair in the trunk. A Papa San chair in the trunk. Papa San chair must be a furniture type. And I it's guess. trunk. I'm. Damn, you lost me, Don, because somehow this is funny. I just don't get it. Um, Van Pasterman at Allen B. Would they give a new homeowners a kickback of cash? Yeah, didn't they give it? Didn't that was it how it worked? If you didn't reported stuff with the insurance person and you told them, then they would give you a kickback when they robbed the place. That happened with every everybody. That I don't think it was a, a department thing, though. I think it was an individual thing. The cop took a big wicker chair. They robbed his Pier One store in the Heights. They reported a squad car going down the road with a. Oh, the, the, the cop stole the chair. I get it now. The yeah, cop stole the chair in the trunk. Okay. Yeah, sure. No, I mean, you know what? That, but that's the shit that always happens, right? Does that mean it? it that's just, they always, but it, it, it happens. Because wherever you got power, you have corruption. It's just plain and simple. It's got to be changed in the Heights, though. The Heights has to change. Chicago Heights is not the same. I mean, no. it, it, <laughs> It would have never happened when uh, Al Palalo's brother was chief of police. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> At least it would have been on the news. <laughs> different time, different place. So, um, 
It's the big wicker chair they used at high school photos. Thanks, Big Mo. I got it. Thanks, Mo. I got it. Everybody gets it except me and you, obviously. But everything goes over Red's head. It's very rarely for this to happen to me. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Done. Alan B. No, I meant the firemen would steal, just steal the stuff. The homeowners assumed it burned up in the fire. Then they would file that as part of the claim. They were none the wiser, but this was in the 70s. I never heard of that. I don't know. I never heard of, you know, they don't like me biased because my dad was a fireman. So no, I never know, heard of firefighter. It. So he's a firefighter. Then he was an engineer. Then he was a lieutenant. Then a captain. You know, so. Hey, Red, what porn DVDs sold the best? Now, here, jump off topic. Here we go. Red Womet, the porn king of Chicago. <laughs> By the, time, by the time we got to DVDs, I was out of business. Ah, so what were the best uh, VHS tapes that sold? Deep Throat. Oh, really? That's the that's the one, huh? That was number one bestseller, and wow. number number okay. two was uh, Debbie Does Dallas. That was number two. Yes. Okay, but that was the number one. Was the, the Deep TV. Throat? I, I wonder that. why was that? Was that a why was that such a was it like, honey, come here, we got a training video. Let's sit you down and show you. <laughs> it was Linda Lovelace, and I really believe that uh, she did several. But okay. um, it was uh, Behind the Green Door. Uh -huh. like I just mentioned it. That was a big one, too. Okay. Very big. Um, it was one of those things where the name itself was intriguing, and you knew what it was about. And uh, you knew you were going to like it. Enjoy it. Okay, Van Pasterman and Miss Can't Be Wrong are both saying that Sonny Francis paid for that to be made. Validit validity? I don't know. I don't know that that's true, and I don't know that it's not. He also paid for or funded or produced Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I did didn't not. know that either. I, I can't see the way I've never even – I've never heard – he did produce he did produce some B grade films uh -huh. out in uh, California and uh that's all I know. Okay. I didn't know. I have no idea. I'm here to learn. I mean, this is just what I'm learning from you and from the uh from the audience and I know our audience they don't watch just us, us. they're watching all kinds of other uh channels that have things to do with, you know, mob facts and uh um you know, all these other mob channels. So who knows? There's tons of stories out there, but thanks for informing us. I get I, it. You know, I into this and see. I watch, there's another I watch videos of other channels, and when I watch them, um, sometimes they'll actually the the people will actually be in here watching our show. But uh, when I watch their show, it's like not always as factual, and it's always pre-recorded, where you can't ask a question. And when you look down at the comments, you see new people that are younger, and they just go along with it like it's fact. And you see other people that are older, like myself, that ask questions. And some rude that make comments and say, you don't know what you're talking about, things like that, who you might think is uh, keyboard warriors. But generally speaking, a great deal of them have a different slant on things. Yeah, everything's slant. Speaking of slants and perspectives, Rick Charlton said Deep Throat was released in the movies also. At the movies, at the movie theater. And so they had adult theater movie, adult places. And then it was, was a thing to go see in the late 70s. Okay, let me ask you this, Red. Now this is I'm just I'm being serious because I've never I've never been to an adult theater. Um, <laughs> I, they, played I never, at the Admiral. they played at the Admiral in Chicago. I've never been to the Admiral. I was, never went to any adult theater in my entire life. We're in the theater, and there's a big screen in the theater. I mean, I've been at the theater. I, we last we went to go see a Top Gun Maverick at the theater. Okay, on the screen. I don't know about you, but having a pornography movie, a pornographic movie on the screen, you're talking gigantic, bigger than life, bigger than life. <laughs> and here's a close up of this guy. And you're going, holy fuck, that's like 10 foot tall. 
<laughs> you leave the fucking theater feeling a little inadequate. I know I would. You know I mean? <laughs> Holy shit, man! It's like God fucking Zilla. You know, or not? I heard I heard different men say the same thing that you just said. Uh, after that, I could never. If they felt inadequate. Uh, no, come on. You know why guys like big boobs? No. Because the first one you ever see is like this big. <laughs> <laughs> it just gets better after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Um, Leanne, this can't be wrong. Sorry, making them making them a little uh, <laughs> laughing laughing there. <laughs> Uh, did Chicago have New York City type peep show spots, Red? I, in my, in the back of my store, that's what we had. We're supposed to be talking about the Chicago outfit. Why are we talking about it? What's going on here? You guys get all off off topic. And Brian Brown, let's bring let's bring some 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 sense back. Ryan, Adam, oh shit, here we go. If I make off topic, what I just. And you just said, let's bring it back. <laughs> okay. Did you hear that Steamboat right. Willie recently became public domain? You want there, to there's a whole... Wait, wait, wait. Steamboat Willie became public. Who's, who's Steamboat Willie, number one? Oh, come on. Really? I don't no. know. Um, okay. I remember winning the pool. Uh, Steamboat Willie is 18... It's a 1928 musical comedy... Directed by Walt Disney, it was produced in black and white, and yeah, it's 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 a Mickey Mouse on the steamboat. Okay, so it's it's common, it's public domain now. There's a horror movie being produced of it. They did that with Winnie the Pooh. Look it up. You got to be kidding me, man. I gotta. I mean, I could see a horror movie about a little mouse on it. You know, I kind of missed it, man. <laughs> I missed the whole thing. <laughs> steamboat Willie was Disney, exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, Scott H. Robert De Bartimo, De Bartimo owned a bunch of porno theaters in New York City and around the country. I think he's talking about the owner of the San Francisco 49ers. And okay. I did meet him in Indi Indiana. Okay. And owned quite a few. <laughs> that was the son of his father, was a millionaire, multi, multi, multi millionaire. Guy was a, he was from New York, but he was like not a nice guy. Miss can't be wrong. You wouldn't like the big boobs if you were carrying them. No, no. <laughs> it's okay, guys. <laughs> so oh, you know, all behave. Charge, folks. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I, I'm, I don't know if a bunch of guys are with me on this one, but uh, if you had a big set of boobies to play with all day, would you leave the house? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fascinating thought. <laughs> there's a guy, no, there's a guy in Vegas. He bets on anything. And his friends bet him so like fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollars that he wouldn't get implants and wear them for an entire year without having them removed. And he did it. This is the same guy they bet that he wouldn't leave his bathroom for 90 days. And the guy sat in his bathroom in his house for 90 days. Ow. Ate, drank, shit, just sat in the bathroom for 90 days straight. And they paid him. They paid him a hundred thousand dollars or whatever. These guys bet big money, high rollers bet on stupid shit. The guy wouldn't get the breast implants taken out after he got them. <laughs> no, leaving him in. He liked them too much. So I'm telling you, you never know. You know what I mean, Red? Just like, yep. So, um, <clears throat> all right. You guys ever hear anything about Bobby Dominic or Albert Avina from Richard's Pub? Dude, I was in Richard's Pub once. I got a story about that because I was I was running a video in there, and, and a few guys got pissed off at me. I mean, rightfully so. I was a little, you know what I mean? And I eh, didn't realize what I was doing at the time. But anyway, um, um, yeah, Richard's Pub's pretty cool. I like it. It's a very, it's a very, um, mm, how you describe it? It's like a neighborhood bar and place, but I like the decorations in it. The photos and whatnot are pretty cool. So, all right. Ryan Brown, Ryan Brown has a comment here. This can't be wrong. Imagine poor Chesty Morgan. Oh, poor Chesty. Yeah. Yeah. The largest that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> what was the other one? Stormy Daniels, I think was her name. That was, that was one, yeah. My wife saw her fall. She's doing a burlesque show here in town. I think it was at the plaza. And she slipped and she, she popped and busted a hip, I think it was. That happened to poor, 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 uh, poor lady. 
Anyways, those burlesque dancers, you got to give it to them. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a tough job. I mean, don't... I think it was a tough industry uh, going back to the beginning. <laughs> you go out on stage and yeah. people throw money at you. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough job and it's a tough thing to, you know. Um, okay, let's see here. That's taking Boob Man to a whole new level. <laughs> I guess it is, yeah. Scott, that is the guy who bet on having him. I, it's true. Scott Christoffel, I got a set of breast implants at my shop. Of course Scott does. Because I'm telling you guys, this guy's curiosity, it's a curiosity shop in Chicago. He's got a little bit of everything in there. Even little silicone bags if you want some of those. <laughs> are they silicone or are they water-based, uh, Scott? Because the water-based are safer from what I've read. If they're silicone, they probably deteriorated. So the silicone, if they rupture, you got serious problems. You know, leakage. Internally, yes. If they're yes. Oh, Tempest Storm. Thank you. That's the, her name. Tempest Storm. That's the other one, Don Cheech. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, Tempest Storm. She's been around forever. Oh, yeah. yeah forever. I don't know if she still is, but... Um, all right. What's a good audio book about the outfit I can listen to while on my road trip? I just tune into Mob Vlog, Scott. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> there you go, right? Yeah. Joshua Allen Marshall. Jack Haley was the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz. I think they had a few tin men. They did. He replaced, um, uh, was it Buddy Epson? I think. Yeah. This guy, yeah. Hey, Google, who was the original tin man in uh, Wizard of Oz? The tin man has been played by 16 actors. 16. The first three, Tim Curry, Neo, and Kelsey Grammer. Never heard of him. Tim Curry? Kelsey Grammer, what are you talking about? Who are the original ones from the 1930 movie? Google? You're going to answer me. You got to say the name again because it doesn't remember on the question. Who is the original t Wizard of Oz? Tin all, right, all right. Hey, Google, who is the original Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz? The Tin Man has been played by 16 actors. Here are the first three. Tim Curry, Neo, and Kelsey Grammer. Never mind, man. Google's got a little, a little malfunction today. The AI isn't working the up to speed. <laughs> All right. It's not up to speed. Uh, Mr. Capone is a great book on Al Capone, according to Bigfoot Turkey for you, Scott, just in case. So uh, Scott H. says, saline implants feel weird. Do they? What didn't you like about the way they felt on you there, Scott? Was it just they were too squishy or they were just not mm. <laughs> fucking with you? Come on. Um, I'm already doing that, Adam. Oh. <laughs> you got to be. Come on. Really? Seriously, guys. We're supposed to be here talking about the mob stuff. And you guys are way the hell off track and left field. How the hell's in what? You know what the thing about it is? The more into left field we go, the larger this audience grows. Do you realize that, Red? Yes, I do. That's the funny part about this. Alexa, no, she can't be fired, so she's... <laughs> she's mm. Yeah, my wife likes the Alexa, so sometimes she, we have an Alexa and a Google in the same freaking room. Tell me if that's not stupid. I mean, honest to God, dude, in the 70s it's people... It's very competitive. Well, it's like I have Android and she has Apple, and we're like constantly... Bah, bah, bah. But it's cool because we both understand each other's technology. So we're able to help each other with it. When it's kind of it's kind of cool. It's actually good, 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 good fit. JJ Dalmo, the Richard Kane book is good too. So check that out, Scott H. In case you want a, another good book, the Richard Kane book is good. You can go to Red's channel and you can listen to me read. Um, Nobody cares and what I did about it to Red. If you haven't done my that, book. my book, yeah. If, if you need, if listen, guys, if you can't get to sleep at night and you really got to just doze off, turn it on, start listening, <laughs> get to sleep. <laughs> Red's book's a hit. I'm serious. Go to redwomet.com and go check out Red's book. You can have him autograph it for you and everything. So, um, Stephen Martin, if 10 men came in a cup, would you drink it? 10 men came. Oh, God. God, no. Come on. Oh. And oh. Oh. Where's the hook? Where's the hook on that one? Oh. Jesus. Unbelievable. Here, Brad, where's your handy wipe? 
Eric, thanks. Come again. <laughs> Slapsy Masky, Maxi. Jack Haley was a movie and vaudeville actor who is always remembered as the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz 1939. The Tin Man role was originally going to be Buddy Ebsen, but it went to Jack Haley, and he's oh, the one who got the problems from the paint um, and, all, and whatnot. So, Kevin Rapper. Lefty Maxi. Thank you. Hey, uh, sorry, let's keep going. Slapsy, but due to an allergic reaction from the aluminum, thank you, it wasn't graphite, it was aluminum powder, Epson was taken out of the casting and Haley replaced him. And they didn't use the damn aluminum makeup on Haley. They figured something else out. Because obviously covering somebody with aluminum dust is as stupid as making them swim in a vat of mercury. <laughs> it's true. Tell yeah. me it's not. It's true. It's the same freaking thing. So, um, Kevin Rathart, I loved you reading Red's book, Adam. All 10 episodes. Thanks, Kevin. See? Thanks. It took us 10 hours. It was It's an hour an episode, 10 hours to read through it. And it's funny, it took us a long time because, I mean, I can read a book faster than that with, without having to, 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 to talk. Speak it aloud. Speak, speak it aloud. And then having read, interrupt, going, oh, let me tell you what my thoughts were in that, which is kind of interesting because you don't get that perspective in the book. It's like little additional thoughts that he's had since the book's come, come out, things that he's been able to tie together throughout. Anyway, um, it's interesting. Check it out if you want to. Don Cheech is falling off his stool wherever he is. <laughs> He's having a good time. But that's what this is all about. It's about having fun and uh, enjoying the company. By the way, guys, you come out here to Vegas, be sure to take the Vegas Mob Tour. Um, you, you get to see all about the movie Casino. You get to hear about Bugsy Siegel, Mo Dalitz. We take you through the old vintage neighborhoods from the 50s and 60s. Um, Really cool vintage Vegas stuff that you would get to see on a normal Vegas tour. Uh, and then the crime tour, you hear all about uh, arson, Steve Wynn's daughter being kidnapped, a Luxor car bombing. That guy just got out of prison. He snuck out of prison, tried to get back to Tijuana um, across the border. That's like the only guy going that way across the border, right? <laughs> this entire year, that guy gets the award for wanting to go across to the south instead of to the north on that border. You know why he missed his bus? Because there was only one leaving the next day. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh-huh. Crazy. But anyways, you hear all about that stuff. And uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. So be sure to check out the Vegas Bob Tour. You guys come out here. Red, it's been an awesome afternoon with you. Guys, we're going to be on Red's channel for a little while. I have to go run some things and things to do. I'll leave it at that. But we're going to go over to Red's channel. We'll see you guys over there in about five minutes. And uh, Red, thank you very much, sir. The... Porno King of Chicago signing off. That's not me. That's Red. <laughs> You're too much fun, guys. Thank you so much, Red. It's been a thrill, man. Year, four years, dude, of sitting here talking. Yeah. I eventually this thing, you know, people are gonna get tired of it. That's what I keep saying, but the, the audience keeps growing. So I say we keep doing it. I say so too. All right, guys, we'll see you here in Las Vegas. Take care, Red. Until next time, we'll see you. It's Mob Vlog every Wednesday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll see you here. Join us for the Vegas Mob Tour. Experience Sin City's dark past. Learn how Bugsy Siegel built the Flamingo. Find out who killed him and why. Hear who Jimmy Hoffa supplied money to back in the 50s. Visit the actual home used in the 1995 blockbuster movie, Casino, and other filming locations as well. See the real jewelry store where Frank Collada and his crew were busted. Sit in the exact spot where Frank Lefty Rosenthal's car was bombed back in 82. View never before seen footage of Frank Collada telling personal stories about Tony Spilatro, Joey the Clown Lombardo, and the Hole in the Wall Gang. This is how serious we thought he's on. It's almost like a peach color. It was brown then. The only thing changed is the dry one. Here's an offer you can't refuse. Upgrade to the Untouchables experience. Following the tour, you'll enjoy a three-course dinner at the Tuscany Gardens, and then VIP seating for the long-running hit, The Rat Pack is Back show. Experience Vegas. The way it was meant to be.